What, you're already filming? Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't clear my throat yet, though. Because I just had McDonald's. Dinner! What? What are we working on? But this just depends which nightmare you want. <laughs> well, I mean, I told Caleb we need some film, we need some video, so we'll, we'll film all week if we have to. Good. You know what I mean? Good. Good. <laughs> so I think for this intro, it's important that we don't talk about all the cars because that makes it real difficult for Caleb to separate yeah. this part yeah. from what we're doing. So let's just. Okay, there's a car the sitting Buick. right there. We're doing the Buick That's with. Which one's priority though? Is it the Buick or the Honda? The Honda's kind of priority. So we work on the Honda first? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't here until you came in. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, Caleb, but the Honda was scheduled. That's why we're here for the Honda. The Buick came in last night. We weren't here for that. We're gonna do that one too, but maybe let's do a, how do you want me to separate this? Just use the Just same a break. intro for both, and then record two takes of you saying what we're gonna work on. <laughs> Hey, let's go work on the Buick. Hey, the Honda just pulled in. Let's work on that instead. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, what are we, how are we gonna put that together? I don't know. I wasn't even really paying attention to what you were saying. I just had a thought, Caleb. Come on, man. There's a cold beer calling my name. <laughs> We could do a, a quick uh, video on this Silverado. It has, what's the code? PO521. PO521, which is uh, no, what's, what's It's the... oil pressure switch sensor, like performance. And there's no oil in there's it. There's no oil in it. Anyway, I, the... anyway, I lost the damn key already. I just had it in my hand. It's I mean, right, I, like, It's right I here I in your just... pocket. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're here today to work on a Honda yes. that was just to not towed in, driven in. Yes. And you said it was something with some lighting okay, issues? So... It came in, washer motor didn't work. There was an accident, you know, up front, and it looked like the inner fender well rubbed into the tire and the, the uh, bottle for the washer fluid, the pump's right there. Yeah. So it ripped the head off. So it was pump. hitting the front? In at that some area. Point. In that area. Yeah, at some, but it looked just more like flex. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so, but I, that's not gonna have anything to do with it. And, well, I could if it's something else. Um, so then it you came sure back. it wasn't a misdiagnosis no, on your the part? Pump, yes, I'll show you the two <laughs> halves he of can't, the pump. It's back with it the is, washer pump comeback. not working it again. Is. But the high so beams I'm, don't work. Okay. And then he's, I'm calling it a comeback. It is Bob. a comeback, man. I mean, that's <laughs> you know. So when you throw part, I didn't diagnose shit. I just threw parts. Yeah, in. but it was damaged, it right? Was it was it broke. It was totally broke. Okay. The, the electrical connector was off. Of Any the relation? Do you think of that being broken and wires touching and? It well, worked a, when you were done. Well, see, it possibly, but it's a two-stage pump. It, it switches relays if uh, you look at it, and it'll pump one way or the other way. for the back. You know, wherever the check valve is yeah. for the back, right? So, but it worked when it left. The MICU, multi-integrated control unit, multiplex integrated control unit, lost communication with the relay module. That's where we're at, because the high beams don't work, done by relays. The fuses are So that relay box relays. has a has a calm line has calm lines. It has it. to, but okay. I think the relays we're looking for are solid state. Okay. You know what I mean? So that's gonna suck. And you that's know? on the same circuit as the washer pump. The washer pump stuff is on that same calm line. Mm -hmm. The high beams, and then when he just came in now, he said, Hey, my air conditioning's not working. Alright, so high There's beams, AC line. clutch, and washers. Washers. All right. And and honestly, the wipers only work on low, which is another symptom. Okay. And then if you want me to get a little bit more, you know, I don't want to throw anything, you know, screw any of your diagnostics no, no, no. up. No, but no, I like There was a bulletin that yeah. I found online, not in my Mitchell, about water getting into the back multiplex integrated control lighting module. In okay. the back, the yeah. moisture gets in and shuts stuff down. Because if you look at the, the uh, communication line, it's a one wire line. Right. But it goes up into a junction box and there's six wires coming back out of it going places. And they're all different colors, but they, they look like they're- And that's the piece that water gets in? No, that's, no, I don't know. I, I didn't go that far. Okay. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure, but I did see some It was on of, the left rear? Left rear, um, but it looks like I might have to pull rear seats and you know, they're like, yeah. What do you mean you, you mean me? <laughs> all right, let's see how it goes. This is a 2009 Honda Odyssey with a 3.5 engine. Let's do a full code scan for what we have going on. So this is a good lesson on really 
networks and how they work. When you see a code in a specific module, like the gauge control module has a code, the rear junction box control module has a code, the MICU has a code. That doesn't mean the problem is in those modules. What that's telling you is there's a problem in this case with the relay control module. The relay control module has no communication with any of these three. And so, uh, I mean, that really kind of dictates where you start. And for me, that's gonna be the relay control module. I, I definitely wanna see where that is in a wiring diagram and a wiring schematic and then see how all of this ties together. So all, all of these are saying the same thing. All of these modules, Danner, are saying that we don't, we're not talking to the relay control module. Yeah, yeah dude, wipers. You, you mentioned wipers aren't working right Only too. Only on low. Yeah, see all of that, all of that's gonna be related. Cause I, I have codes in, I'm not worried about the tire pressures, but the gauges, the door locks, the HVAC climate control, the keyless transmitter. I the, think the door locks work though, I'm the, not the sure. Lighting, the lighting, the power sliding door, the power tailgate, power windows security system the wiper system all of those say the same thing that they're not talking to the relay control module the micu the gauge control rear junction box they're all saying the same code so uh i just rambled on for about 10 minutes and we're cutting all of that out because nothing's working bi-directionally and what i was telling caleb and you guys was when i have an output not working um, it could be an input problem, could be a module problem, could be the output itself. And I was gonna do some bi-directional tests to show you guys the high beams um, and the high wipers, which are not working bi-directionally. And the modules that I keep going into just keep telling me this is not supported. I believe that it is because the options are there, but I believe it's all an indication of our problem. And so we're just moving on. So I, I really need to look at this relay box that they're that all the modules are having codes for i think that's that's our next step so moving to the wiring diagram now dinner what is this an ex and lx a touring i have i don't know how to tell don't say anything on the back no ex it is <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna go with the headlight diagram first yeah this is the guy i'm interested in this right rear of engine compartment underhood fuse relay box and that's the one that everything's lost communication with. That's a partial view too. So how do I attack this? What's the best way to approach this? So we have a comm line coming into that. It says control block inside of this. All these dotted lines are partial views. These fuses that are shown here are outputs. That aren't, those are not power feeds in. That would be to protect this control block from excessive current flow, say on that circuit or that or or this one, those would be out, not in. So I'm thinking powers and grounds to that module, of course, but those would not be it, in my opinion. I know I'm gonna need a more expanded view of that. But I just want to talk about the the um, communication line here real quick. So on as a blue wire comes over to uh, three on the diagram to the next page, right? And then it comes up to the MICU, which is drivers under dash fuse relay box. Those are all talking to each other. And then that comes over on a brown yellow and that talks to the body controller area network transceiver, which is for what? Power supply circuit controller area network controller. It's the gauge control module. And then it also comes down to the combination switch control unit, which is your wiper washer combo switch. Probably the headlight circuit too, maybe. See all of those, I believe all of those are talking except relay control module. There is a main fuse multi uh, fuse 22, it's 120 amp. That's, this thing wouldn't be doing anything if that fuse was blown. So it is like the fuse box itself. Well, that's gonna be a difficult call. I really need to see what else this thing controls. I know that the low beams work. I can turn the headlights on, my low beams work. So I know that relay is functioning. The high beams do not work. I might need the flow chart for a little bit of guidance here. I hesitate to use it because flow charts can really 
take you like a bass backwards way around a diagnosis. A what? A bass backwards? Is that what I said? Mm -hmm. An ass backwards? <laughs> I'm just gonna stop talking. I, I really wanna check this relay control module for other circuits not working you know, to check main powers, but the low beams work, that's controlled by that. So I was just gonna say, maybe I check this like 7.5 amp fuse right here that's going into the, the relay control module, which is there, that is one main feed. But if that was blown, I, I would think that nothing would work. Maybe not, there's a 30 amp going to it there too. I just need some direction. I don't wanna go poking around and get lost under the hood on this. I need a good direction and I just don't have it yet. Yeah, relay control module controls the, the wipers too. I mean, that's where we're going for sure. It controls the wiper, the washer, the high beams, the low beams. Does the horn work? Yes, it does. And that is controlled by the relay control module too. But there's multiple feeds to it, it looks like. Not everything is dead on the relay control module. So all of our lights are controlled by the relay module, including the tail lights. Do I have tail lights? Danner! What? Do I have tail lights on right now? No. So I got no parking oh, lights. Oh wait, now you do. There you do. But in the, in the parking light mode, I don't. But uh. in the low beam mode, I do. Ah. So I got no, I got no parking lights like I should either. Nice. Did you notice this when you, when you go to high beam? Yeah, flash to pass works. Works, but forward don't. But right. it still don't give power to the bulb. Right. You know and we I mean? don't have, and we don't have high you wipers, know. and we don't have front wash or, or rear washers. You I thought no I one. heard the rear. Okay, no, no rear wash. Because nah, they're, they're that relay's right next to the other. Here's one. Here's the weird so. thing though, like the horns on it. Right? Okay. There's other circuits, the low beams are on it. There, there are things that are working from yeah. that relay box, yeah. but then other things that are not. And I'm trying to find a diagram that shows me like main feeds to it and chances of it being a main fuses power or ground. I them you did? Yeah. Okay. There like, was that one seven and a half amp fuse or whatever. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? That's, yes, that I just got mentioned power. that. Okay. There was a couple more though, I thought. There was, I thought. Yeah, but if you look at that, those ones, no, one of them goes to the wiper motor. Yeah, no. And the wiper motor works, so it has to be a good fuse. You know what I mean? Okay, like, yeah. This seven and a half amp one right here, you checked. So that would be a feed into it right there. I didn't, no, I didn't check that. And, and then, seven? and then yeah. there's a 30 amp one right there. No, I did not check that. I didn't see that. Where'd you find that diagram? This is uh, the power distribution diagram. Oh, see, I didn't find that one. So those, I would say those two guys for sure, I want to, I'd want to check, but you'd think if a main fuse was blown that nothing would work and things are working, but it's still worth starting there. Yeah. Um, but I have to go, like you'd mention water in that one connector. Mm. I'm not seeing that because when I, um, I, mean, I guess it's possible, but all those other circuits are working. Like if you if you had a network that was crashed, like you're talking about water in in that connector, mm -hmm. it would be pulling not just the relay box the relay box module down. That's the only one that's not communicating. Mm. I mean, I guess you could have something like that, but without seeing the whole diagram and seeing how I'm talking to this mm -hmm. this relay control module, I'm not sure yet. So let's go check those two fuses first, and then we'll see if I can get a better diagram on on the network lines and. Maybe we can tie this into what my brother had found. You said it was a bulletin or a recall? I was just doing some searching on, on I just I think I just typed in Honda Odyssey lost communication with relay module and I found a, okay. someone that it looked more like a bulletin, it wasn't a forum. Okay. Should be this, this one, should be the 30 amp. Why, dude, why is that grounding that? We might have found a problem here right off the bat. Oh, that's the rear window defogger relay. Why would they fuse protect that going into the relay control module? Because when I when I touch that, listen. I can hear it. What I'm doing is I'm grounding the rear window defogger relay. So that's not gonna have power unless the rear window defogger is turned on. Let me go do that. 
Oh, wrong button. This should be hot now. And it's not. That's the control side of the relay. The reason that that started to glow is that's, that's grounding the control side of that relay. Something's, I, I'm not reading this diagram right. Why would they put a 30 amp fuse on the ground side of the rear window defog relay? It doesn't make sense that that would be, so what that's, by me touching this fuse here and here with my test light, that's telling me, and I hear a click, that's telling me the coil for the relay is between three and four four has power and when i'm grounding essentially pin three through my test light through the fuse i hear the relay rear window defogger relay click they're not showing me the load side pin pin two would be your load side feed and then pin one which they're not showing would go to the rear window defogger itself that's what i'm seeing but i don't understand why the 30 amp fuse is there Okay, while I'm here, that's confusing to me. I'm gonna jump over to this other 7.5 amp fuse, fuse number seven, and it should be, it should be this one that's upside down, indicating like maybe someone was in here. And that one's hot. None of those other ones are. This guy right here. So that's a power feed that comes from fuse number 30. It's a 10 amp fuse. And that would feed power in to, see if I'm reading this right. That's inside, driver's under dash. That's inside the car. Feeds fuse to an AC inverter, if it has it, and then to the underhood fuse box, M. So power does come in to here. This is a power feed right there from the inside powers up the rear window defogger relay weird so that pin four is a power on this relay and that means pin three is the ground they're not showing the load side of the rear window defogger the grid that would come from fuse 14 is the power feed into that and then it, it goes into pin two and for whatever reason, they're putting a 30 amp fuse to the relay control module. And that doesn't make sense to me. I, I, need, to, I need to pull out the rear window defogger motor diagram. How weird is that? It is exactly what I said. Power comes in, 10 amp fuse, feeds that circuit right there. When I'm taking my test light, I'm touching my test light here and here, and we hear the relay clicking, which means that this absolutely has power for me to ground it on pin three which is what i'm doing power comes in on four and grounds on three and when i am touching the fuse i'm grounding this relay that means that power feeds good why would they put a 30 amp fuse into the control block right there on that circuit I, that makes zero sense to me but that's not really a feed in. That's the controlled ground for the relay. So that circuit, that fuse will never show power. Climate control, AC panel, power window, master switch, wiper washer, automatic lighting control, underhood fuse relay box. These are all on the B can. That's the body can, I'm guessing. One and 10 to the next diagram. Then the gauge control module, power seat control units on there, right power sliding doors on there, power tailgate, all those things we were, we were all reading. And all of these modules that are on this BCAN network are indicating the, re the relay control module. This guy right here is not talking. So I was trying to attack this first in focusing on the, re, uh, the relay control module, main powers, main grounds. The problem is I can't get a good diagram of that alone. It's pieced together throughout the whole system. And then of course, I'm gonna check this can line here. I, I think I might just need to start there. This K8, it's a blue wire and find that wire and see what kind of network signal I have on that because the rest of this is working. 
and ignore the rear window defogger circuit that I'm seeing. I don't, I can't answer why they'd have a 30 amp fuse on the ground side control of a relay. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I'm gonna disregard that momentarily and try to refocus on this relay control module and where it gets uh, its main power from. It might only be that one seven and a half amp fuse that we already checked that powers that. Uh, I'm gonna go back to our power distribution and look for anything that is telling me about these, these, <laughs> this relay module. So starting in diagram one of eight, relay control module. So we checked the seven and a half amp fuse one there and we checked that 30 amp one had those weird clicking because we are controlling the relay. When some of you are thinking, why don't you check the black yellow wire right there coming in? I don't need to because that relay would not be clicking and that test light wouldn't be glowing if we were not on the ground side controlling that relay, meaning there's power on the other side. That's why I'm not checking it. Moving on, looking for anything else that tells me the relay control module has a feed. It looks like not. You know what's funny as I, I do these things and sometimes we'll, we'll run into it afterward as we're doing a diagnosis like this, this might be a common problem and we never Google searched common problems. And the funny thing is, if this is a common problem, we have probably people right now in the comments that are like, ah, oh, it's this, you know, go, go here. That's fine. We can do that, but that's not what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to teach processes and systems and testing, because when there's not a silver bullet fix, do you know what to do? Um, when there's not common repairs, can you dissect the circuit and troubleshoot? And so we've always approached it from that direction. Naysayers aside, I'm kind of answering them. I don't even know if there is, but don't care if there is, is what I'm saying. Relay control module, there is a feed right there with some diodes involved. Where does that come from? Let me come back and see if there's any more. So this is diagram four of eight. Relay control module, there's more that comes in there. Fuse 20, fuse 11. Yeah, there's a lot here. Horn relay. There's quite a bit more here, Caleb. Fuse 20. I'm just worried about that feed right there. Let's see what else is driven off of this. Drivers under dash fuse relay box. The uh, wiper washer switch is on there. The shift lock solenoid is on there. Parking backup sensor switch, front passenger door, hazard warning switch, front passenger power window switch, door lock switch. heard it. I heard it work from there. So that's a good indication that the circuit's alive. The power mirror control unit is also on that. Let's see if we have power mirrors that work. Yeah. Okay. So those do work. So that's an indication then that this circuit is alive. I mean, not right down to this, but at least we have power coming in to the seven and a half amp fuse. All right, moving on. Relay control module for the wiper circuits. That'd be this one and this one. Drivers under dash fuse relay box. So fuse 11 and fuse 20. I need to check those. Fuse 11 and fuse 20. He said this was also hit, if I remember. I think he said in the left front. That's fuse 30. Or so that's fuse 11, and then I said fuse 30, right? Yeah. Fuse 30 is a 10 amp, and those are good. Those fuses are fine. All right, I'm gonna unbolt this, this fuse box, so I can get underneath to where the connectors are. Let's see, you know, as I'm struggling with the diagrams, let's see where these, let's see where these flow charts are gonna take me. I hesitate to do it. 
Let's do the uh, B1959 code. So where am I here? If you follow the instructions in BCAN system diagnosis test mode A, that's what we want. Check the PCM for DTCs and troubleshoot PCM or FCAN loss errors first. We don't have those. Then perform this diagnosis first if the symptoms relate. So BCAN is what we have. Compare the system with this list of BCAN related systems. Okay, list a whole bunch of modules. Is the symptom related to the BCAN? Yes, it is because we got codes in all of those. Step two, connect Honda Diagnosis Tester, turn the key on. From body system selection, select unit information, select connected unit listed to see if the following control units are communicating. Yeah, so we're doing other ones. Are those communicating the MICU, the Dorplex, the gauge, the combo, the relay? So the relay control module's not. Are all control units communicating with the HDS? They're not. So without the Honda service tool, can I select the relay control module? Well, I really can't because it's not listed that way. People often ask, what's the best scan tool to use? The factory scan tool, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> If I had a Honda factory scan tool when I was working on this Honda, I'd be using the Honda factory scan tool. System not supported. So within the flowchart, I can only assume that I'm not able to talk to the relay control module because the other modules are telling me that. I don't have the option in my list for the relay control module. They're just not listed that way. Under the record, the lighting module I'm talking to I'm talking to the wiper. I'm talking to the security. I'm talking to the power windows. That's where I'm getting these codes. I'm talking to the power tailgate. I'm talking to the power sliding door. I'm talking to the lighting system, the keyless transmitter, the HVAC climate control, the door locks and the gauges, anti-lock brakes, airbags, tire pressure, active control mount, transmission engine. But I'm not talking to the relay control module based on the other systems. They don't show the relay control module specifically in here. Active control mount, like we have code. So I'm just gonna follow this flow chart as if I can talk to everything except the relay control module. So we're gonna say no, are all control units communicating with the HDS? That's the Honda diagnostic system. Um, we're gonna say uh, no. If any of the control units are not communicating, go to BCAN system diagnosis test mode B. If all units are not communicating or only the M's, okay, yeah. So we're gonna go to that one. Perform this diagnosis if any of the control units are not communicating, not available is displayed in the HDS, that's Honda Diagnostic Scan Tool. As found by the BCAN system diagnosis test mode A, using the HDS, again, that's anytime it tells you that, we're just using the scan tool. Select the system that has the symptom from the body electrical system select menu, select DTCs, and then check for loss of communication DTCs. Are any loss of communication DTCs indicated? Um, so basically it's having me pick one of the control units, maybe clear them and see if we have that fault. I'm gonna say, yes, we do. I don't need to do that. These are hard faults. Things are not working right now. I think the way I'm interpreting that that has the select the system that has the symptom. Well, the symptom would be the codes. Anyway, perform the test input test for the unit not communicating with the HDS. It's telling me an order in which to do things. It says perform the input test for the unit not communicating. So we'll say the relay control module, relay control module input test. Move the under hood fuse relay box. Disconnect the underhood fuse relay box connector K. Inspect the connector and socket terminals to be sure they're all making good contact. So we're doing connector checks and they're giving me voltage readings. That's sweet. This is our K8 was a communication line and um, check for continuity. I'm not gonna check for continuity. How about giving me a voltage reading? They're not gonna do that. Check for continuity between K8 terminal and drivers under dash fuse relay box connector D number 11 terminal there should be continuity at least they're giving me like what they want like that's looking like power and ground yeah k10's your ground k2 
is power and that comes from a 7.5 amp fuse in the driver's under dash fuse relay box blown number 21 i'm going to go check that real quick fuse 21 seven and a half amp fuse before i pull this box i don't think i checked that one fuse 21 seven and a half yep It's like someone's been in here, man. I mean, there's like freshly packed grease. It looks freshly packed grease in all these connectors. So underhood fuse relay box connector K. It'd be nice to have a full view of that. So there's a yellow, blue, and black. All right, wipe this off. I think it's this top one. Because there's the tab. Looking at the tab, two is yellow, 10 is black, yep, which is that one, and then two over is blue, that's that one, that's yeah, my calm that. line, okay. and that's, that's power and ground. What they want you to do, of course, is continuity. Okay, no, all right. In, in their defense, measure voltage to ground. There should be battery voltage, K2 and K10. So for now, I'm, I'm comfortable with the test light for this. K2, this should be battery voltage right here. Oh, it's not. Oh, the key needs to be on. I shut the key off while you went to go eat. I was excited for a second. Key's on. So we got power. I think we already knew that because other things were working. And then the main ground can also be done with my test light to ground because I'm plugged in. And that's the end one. It's this one right here. If this ground was bad, this light would be lit right now. Um, I can, just to make everyone comfortable though, I can switch my test light to battery positive and that should light. All right, but when you understand voltage drops and bad grounds, as long as it's plugged in, circuit loaded, if that ground was bad, I'm now reconnected to battery ground, doing a ground to ground test, that would light. And then the final ones, the COM line, they want me to disconnect that. We may do it this way, but disconnect it, and then they want me to check in another location, under dash fuse relay box D, 17 pin, and under hood fuse relay box K, 10 pin, they want me to do a continuity test. I want to see what that signal looks like. Knowing that this is a network signal though, checking, let's see if this makes sense. Two different modules. These guys send and receive, both of them. This is, doesn't matter which ones, okay? Um, if I measure here, which I'm about to do with a voltmeter, if I measure here with a voltmeter, you can still have an open in between and still see network signals. Why? Because both modules send and receive. So we could be sending out, right? sending out and never receiving anything back and I'll never notice what the signal looks like on the meter. So an, a continuity test may be necessary, but I do want to first view the waveform. I don't know what kind of network signals these produce, the single line body can. I have not researched that part yet and I may or may not have to, we will see. Hey, snap on, snap on in their leads. Oh, Stupid freaking favorite. snap on. Look at this. Seriously, I can't even use battery ground for this test. That's super frustrating to me and super stupid. And it makes me super angry. I need a jumper wire. This is a really important test and I don't want to use anything but battery ground. I'll just stretch the shit out of the box and bend the shit out of my pen and then I can make contact. There it is. And let the buffer fill. Yeah, it's pretty much a zero to five volt square wave. Pause that, zoom out. What would be really nice 
is if I had some data packets that I could dissect, which I can with my Pico, and then I can put in like identifier numbers and say, hey, that's, you know, such and such module that's communicating. I have signals here. Now the problem with, like I said, I can't just say, okay, the network's fine because I have signals here. This thing might be trying to talk and I have an open somewhere else. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is an unplug it test for this module. And my assumption is our waveform is gonna be identical. And you see it is. So now that test, in my opinion, tells me unplugged, I don't need to do any open circuit tests. Because back to my diagram here, module, I'm just doing two. We're over here, under hood, measuring right here, right? Voltmeter to ground, and we have network signals in this location. We could have an open, like I said, here. If we had an open here, we would still see signals here because this module's sending. But when I unplug it here, this module's no longer sending, right? And the fact that I still have a waveform in this location tells me what? I'm talking to other modules this way. They're coming this way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm saying that the resistance measurement that they're, t they're having me do is of no value whatsoever. We could maybe do it. I just don't see a reason to do it. It looks like, you know, we're done. <laughs> As far as the, the flow chart goes, this module's just not talking and it half works. We should do the old tap test to it. What do you think? <laughs> Would be nice to depin this and then just to see the network communication line. I should cut, I should just cut it just to prove a concept. We're gonna do something a little unorthodox because we're just proving concepts and learning more about network diagnostics every day. I'm gonna cut this wire. And I believe when I do, based on the other symptoms we have, that I'm gonna lose network signals. These network signals that I'm seeing right now are from other modules. And when I cut this, and I will fix it when we're done, we're gonna lose network signals. If this was a mic, what do we do with it? <laughs> no network signals. Danner. Yes. This needs this box. Huh? This needs this box. It does? Yeah, you'll like this test, man. Check this out. I've been feeling defeated for like an hour and a half, and now, now I no longer do. Let me ask you this, is it something that needs programmed? Probably, but we can try. I mean, I'll call my friend Matt, and we'll see, we'll see what we can do. I don't want to say no and not finish the job. You're you not know? supposed to cut wires. <laughs> so this is the blue wire, Come, that's the comm that's line. That's the comm line. So that, um, what they have you do is check the main power and main ground. I found in the flow chart, mm -hmm. I've got two Two to check, and, and we did that. The black wire is the main ground, the yellow wire is the main power, they're good, right? Okay. Then they want you to disconnect this module and disconnect another module inside the car and measure for continuity. Mm -hmm. And from there to there would tell you that you're at least intact to yeah. the network. Yeah. I'm like, I don't wanna do it that way. Yeah. So with it connected, you see we have no network signals. Mm -hmm. With this connected, see we got network signals. Oh, and that looks nice, too. Yes, and yeah. when I unplug it, so what I said is, okay, the test for me, the, the issue is you can still have an open and still have communication, a good signal, because it can be this box yeah. that's producing it. Sure. So when I, when I, the next step was, unplug it. I unplugged it and I still had good network signals, right? As you can see. Yes. So then I was like, well, how do I isolate this box? Because this box isn't talking on the network. Okay. And I said, well, the best way, easiest way is to do that. Mm -hmm. And I should have 
something. <laughs> I should have network signals here because yeah. I do on this side, right? Mm -hmm. I got nothing on this side. Now, maybe it's possible that this single wire network isn't designed as I'm thinking. In other words, they all produce their own zero five volt square waves and send them out on the network. That's the way CAN is. Mm -hmm. CAN systems, they'll all produce a two and a half volt bias and they'll ride the signals plus and minus over that. Every module produces its own. I believe this is the same way. That should, I, mean, yeah. I should have a signal there right now. Yeah. I definitely don't have an open. I'll see where the flow chart leads me just to make sure, but I'm saying that this module's not talking. Maybe we can smack on it, make it stop, start talking. That would be sweet, wouldn't it? Let's just make sure we have a good ground here on my meter. Okay. So, I don't know. Wiggle and pull and... Talk, damn it. You go smack it with that. <laughs> yeah. I guess the module parts up top, like up. Hey, look, I had a signal. I had a signal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Proof of concept. Look, now it's now good. Now we're talking. Now let's see if everything works. Well, it won't because I have it disconnected. But what's that? What's does that prove my concept? That, that proves your concept. Did Porters you catch work. what I was hitting on on the top up here? Get, come over here just so you can see where I was hitting. And that's where the circuit board and the circuit solid state relays here. are. We should at. be able to. Oh, we should be able to that. fix it. I was smacking up here. Okay. Because I'm plugged in here. Yeah. That that tells me those smart parts up here. Yeah. And I smacked on on this part right there. Well, Camera touch, man. touch your wires together. Hold on, let, let me make a more permanent connection. No, no, Give no, me no, a jumper no. Just wire. touch the wires together. Just touch them you together. You just want to see if the high beams work. I just want to see if the freaking squirters work. Probably, That's what it was here for. That was the comeback could, I had. You could pick something better. Hold okay. On. Okay, well, they might, the bulbs might be bad. This just wire touch is them. so tiny. Hold on. Oh, All right, I didn't do that. The wires are together. But they, you got high beams. Wait. Hi, oh, there's your high beams. High beams, brother. Do, do the uh, high wipers, because the fast wipers I didn't work. I still don't have squirters. Probably because that's Did your- Did you lose communication? That's your comeback, the squirters. Do we have, there you go. Nice. Wait, but hold on a second. Yeah, so there's just something wrong in there. In where? In that module. Yeah. Do you have high, are the wipers work on high now? Oh, but that's the rears. Hold on. That's. You gotta turn it. Oh, uh, what? Dummy. <laughs> turn it. No, not that part. Not that part. That's your turn signals. That's the rears. Other. No, the. Wiper on high. Yeah. Nice. Everything's working as designed. Okay. okay, well, take it apart and find the problem. <laughs> or just... No, listen, man. You no, have no it, idea how cool that was. That was super cool because you were only speculating until you had proof. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And so what do we know then about a single wire for sure in this... Well, I don't know if we can say it for all cars, but a single wire <laughs> communication line, they all produce the same signal. And you, if you isolate a module like we just did, you absolutely should have communication there. That's that's what, and that's why their test was like check resistance from that wire to another module. If it's good, then it needs a module. Yeah, which you know is okay, but could be written better. Turn the key back on. Let's see if we can recreate this fault. There's my network line. I'll watch when I smack on it. See it jump up to like ten volts. We're going to go to 20 volt now because I saw it go off the screen. Okay. Watch it. Oh, that's cool. That's what hey. it should look like. Nice. It shouldn't see those big spikes. Yeah. It shouldn't be doing that and it shouldn't be doing that. So yeah, there's probably, remember earlier when I was talking about, well, someone already knows, oh, it needs a, sm it needs a smart fuse box. Yeah. And someone out there is probably like, just tap on it. Do you know? Yep. Just tap on it. We, we learned a lot more at our method. That's what we do on this channel.
This ain't about silver bullets. This is about troubleshooting, methodical troubleshooting, learning as we go. We're learning too, bringing you guys along for the ride. Let's see if we can fix this. I doubt it, but it would be sweet if we could. You know what's cool about that? I don't know that we'll include this part, but what's cool about what we just found, we don't need to come back for this one. If we can't program it, if we can't whatever, we don't have to prove it any further. We've just done that. It's not our problem. It's not our problem. All right, turn the key off, and then I definitely am gonna disconnect the battery. <laughs> Okay, copper one to the left. Got Did it. both high beams work, Caleb? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the weed look, looked like the one bulb was like burnt and the other one was broke, but if it works, good, because I don't want to freaking touch them. <laughs> well, we don't care like how well they work. <laughs> Only that they do work. Yeah, be back tomorrow yeah if, you want high, if you want high beam bulbs, you're paying me a hundred bucks to pull the bumper off and get to those ones. Like you said, it was in for the washer circuit. Originally, but then it was the high beams in the washer and then- You sure uh, you didn't misdiagnose the washer pump? <laughs> so in light of what we found, how strange that some stuff did work within this box. The horn, low beams, for example. Interesting side note. Are you trying to crack it open? Yeah. Watch me break the plastic. Or jab yourself in the hand with a screwdriver. Oh, that's that's a given too. Dinner. Need some help. I, I I don't know how this comes apart, man. Good. Really? <laughs> you want me to stop? You yeah, want to sell the job? I'm just gonna buy one from a junkyard. We'll plug it in and see what the hell happens. I want to take this apart. Well, wait till I have one to put in. Then you can do that. Okay. You know, because yeah. it looks plastic welded and plastic riveted. Yes. You're probably not going to get it apart without no. breaking seals. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's like, and those don't push in either, you know? It almost looks like it would, but. It's trying to slide. But it won't. Here, you break it. What kind of freaking <laughs> pocket screwdriver is that? The only one I that? had. Yeah, you're not gonna get this apart without screwing it up. Man. Yep, agree. It's like an ogre, man. It's, all right, it has layers. Okay, so we're not fixing it. We're gonna try to get one, and then once we do get one and fix it, then we'll just cut this apart with a, or we'll just break the we'll out of break it. Break it and, and just look and see where the issue is. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that- So this is an 09? Yeah, I'm sure it's a solder joint, Danner. All right, so I'm putting this back together. We just uh, fixed that wire. Customer's gonna take the car because finding a part might be very difficult. So far it's proved to be for my brother. And uh, we're just gonna get this back together so it can be driven. And hopefully we'll have an update for you guys with a new part. And if we do, then we're gonna try to bust this one open and see where it failed inside and maybe give you guys some pointers, um, some do-it-yourselfers out there that wanna maybe fix their own box. One final tip in this segment or in this video is if you have these kind of faults and it's talking about the relay box, no communication, just come out under the hood, smack on it right here, right where the, the logics of the circuit are under this cover, smack it right there. You, you might, know, get, fairness, might get you Paul, going. I smacked on it right there when it was bolted in and nothing never changed. It never changed. But you had to tilt it on the side when you did it. I don't know. I, I smacked on it. And I couldn't get, you know okay. what I mean? Like nothing happened for me, but I didn't yeah. try it as many times as you either. But sitting I, there. Yeah, I mean, it was right away. I just tapped it real light. But like you said, it was flat. So do you know what he means? I do know what he means. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you hopefully for an update on this. If not, we'll see you next time. Oh, dude, I have another good one for you. Come on, man. How much time you got today? I'm doing it today, so. I mean, we're here. So just, it's just, a, wait, let me rephrase that. Turn the key on. Okay, hold on a Never second. Never mind, I'll talk to you later. No, you're good. It's a, we're, wait, it depends on how these cars go because yeah. you know how flustered I get I, sometimes. I, I know. And if I get my, with these, like, if I, I get know. myself to a. I don't know how you enjoy picking this career with all the crap I give you, <laughs> you know? You're like, it's, I need good stuff while it keeps coming yes. because thanks to COVID, no one can buy anything or buy anything. So you got to keep it 
here. No one can buy anything or buy anything? Or buy anything. Or buy anything. Can't buy a car, can't buy parts. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. So. So. On to the Honda. There's a, oh, can't even sing. Come on, man.